Hey, what's up everybody? Dornell Data here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we got something that I think everyone needs to talk about, everyone needs to think about, everyone needs to marinate their mind on. And that is the difference between merely being interested in success versus being committed to success. Semantics, right? What's the difference between being interested and being truly committed? Well, it reminds me of a story of the pig and the chicken walking down the road. And all of a sudden, the chicken gets this absolute exciting bolt of energy revelation and passes it on to his friend, the pig, and says, hey, pig, what do you think about starting up a restaurant together? I think we could do great together, do some big things. And the pig says, sounds like a great idea. What should we call it? And the chicken says, how about we call it ham and eggs? And the pig's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Not so fast, brother, not so fast. For you, that's of interest. For me, that's an all out commitment, right? <laughs> so notice the difference. The chicken just gotta lay some eggs, no big deal. But for the pig, he's gotta give up his life. He's gotta give everything. He's gotta go all in. That's called commitment, going all in. You got some skin in the game. In that case, you got your flesh and your life on the line. So what is the difference? What is the difference between being interested and being committed? There's something that shifts in your heart when you're truly committed to something, is there not? There's something that gives you a sense of urgency, a sense of passion, a sense of I'll do whatever it freaking takes to win that comes from being committed that you don't find with the interested. So you guys have goals you want to achieve, right? You're at a particular place in your business and there's a particular place you want to get to. There's a mountain you want to climb. There's a summit you want to conquer. My question to you is, are you merely interested in conquering or are you all out committed to conquering? Because let's be real. Talk is cheap. Anybody can talk a big game. Anybody can talk and say, hey, I'm committed. But when push comes to shove, when it comes to paying the price for victory, when it comes to paying the price to conquer that summit, are you truly willing to pay the price? Are you just merely talking a big game or are you willing to walk a big game? Because that's really what separates the achievers from the dreamers from the people who are living the dream versus people who are just hoping for it and praying for it and waiting for it. It's that special something where they've got a sparkle in their eye, they've got pep in their step, and they're willing to do whatever it freaking takes to win. That's something you can't pop a pill for. That's something you can't get an injection for. That's something you can't get a shot in the arm for. You either have it or you don't. So this is an opportunity for some real introspection, friends. Because if you're going to just talk a big game, what's the point of talking a big game if you're not willing to walk it? If you're going to just talk about making a big impact and making big numbers and making big things happen and you're not willing to pay the price for it, why even talk about it? You're just breathing hot air. You're just blowing hot air. You're just blowing smoke. Why not just kind of keep doing what you're doing and be content with where you're at? See, at the end of the day, it comes down to what is the cost of staying where you're at? And is that cost high enough such that you're willing to pay the price to move beyond it, to reach for higher ground? Because you're going to have a price either way. Have you noticed? If you want to get in shape and you're 50 pounds overweight and you're frumpy, you're rolly, you look at yourself in the mirror when you get out of the shower and you're like, man, this doesn't look right. This doesn't feel right. You've got a pivot point at that point. You either... Soften it and say, I'm big boned. I'm just a tad bit overweight. I'll get to it someday. And you soften the problem. Or you say, this freaking sucks. This is not me. This is not who I am. My husband or my wife deserves better. I deserve better. My kids deserve better. What kind of a role model am I being to my kids? Man, I don't even know if I'm going to see my grandkids at this point. If I keep going down this path, I may not even see my grandkids. I might kill over with a heart attack. And you start giving yourself real talk about the situation. And all of a sudden, you shift from a should to a must. Because let's be real. 
if it's just a should to get in shape, you'll never get in shape, will you? You just sit on the couch eating bonbons watching Oprah. You'll never get in shape. You'll never go to the gym. You'll never do what it takes to have the daily routine to get in shape. Doing it when you don't feel like it. Doing it when you're not in the mood. Doing it when it's inconvenient. But when it becomes a must and you, so there's, and you say to yourself, there's no freaking way I'm going to be overweight for my kids. There's no freaking way I'm going to be overweight for my spouse. There's no freaking way I'm going to be overweight for myself. I'm a champion. I'm a winner. And this is not a reflection of who I am. I got to have my body. I need to have my life in sync with who I am. And when you shift that and you get that emotional intensity, you say, I'm willing to do whatever freaking takes. If that means I need to get up an hour earlier, I will get up an hour earlier. If that means I need to pay for a gym membership, I will pay for the gym membership. If it means I got to pay for a, a strategic partner, maybe it's a personal trainer, or maybe it's orchestrating a partner at the gym, like a buddy, an accountability buddy, whatever it takes. You're willing to do whatever it takes to get the outcome. That's the difference between it being a must versus a should. If it's a should, you just end up shouldn't all over yourself. I should do this. I should do that. And you never do anything. It's always someday. The road called someday leads to a town called nowhere. And then you get to this place, this pivotal defining moment in your life where you just draw a line in the sand. You say enough is enough. No more. I freaking had it. I'm done with being mediocre. I'm done with being average. I'm done with settling. I'm done with drifting. I'm done. I'm getting goosebumps right now because that's the substance of life changing resolve, friends, when you just decide I'm freaking done and you're willing to pay the price, whatever it takes, even when you don't feel like it, even when you're not in the mood, even when it's not convenient, even when it's hard. You say, screw it, let's freaking do it. Because I understand champions are willing to do whatever it takes. I understand the road to being a champion is paved with sacrifice, with discipline, with hustle, with resolve. And I'd rather pay the price of discipline, which weighs an ounce, and be a champion, than pay the price of regret, which weighs a ton, and be mediocre, and regret it for the rest of my life. You guys with me on that? So there's a psychological secret sauce to success that comes to a point, a pivotal fever pitch point in your life where you just decide to raise your standards, to no longer sell. And no one can manufacture that for you. That's something you have to manufacture within your own psychology, within your own self-talk, or you just come to a point of defiant resolve. You will not back down. There is no backup plan. It reminds me of the story of the pioneers when they came to the new land and they had obstacles and challenges and formidable opponents. And, uh, you know, they had the opportunity to keep the safety boats as backup. So if they need to retreat, they can. And the captain of the ship in this pivotal moment where they really had an opportunity to set up those backup boats, he decided to make a pivotal defining command as the leader of his fleet, as the leader of his army. And he said, burn the boats. He commanded to burn the boats. Now there is no backup plan. We either win and live or we freaking die. There is no backup plan. See, some of you, the reason why you're in a cul-de-sac of frustration and you continue to struggle and you continue to spin your wheels is because you haven't burned your boats. You say, I, I'm not doing so bad, I'm doing six figures. I'm not doing so bad, I'm doing better than most. I'm not doing so bad. A lot of my family I came from, they came from poverty. I'm doing better than them. And so we soften the problem. And then we say, hey, you know, worst comes to worst, I can always get a job. I can always go and get a nine to five. Worst comes to worst, we can always, do a refi on the house, get a home equity line of credit. It'll ride us out during this dry season. You see what happens, right? We start to manufacture the backup boats. And all of a sudden, instead of focusing on total resolve for victory, we become double-minded. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See, when you're thinking about victory and failure, victory and failure, victory and failure, you're unstable, aren't you? 
You're unstable in all your ways. You have not planted the flag. You have not drawn the line in the sand. You have not put your life on the freaking line and say, I will not back down. Victory is mine, period. End of freaking story, right? It's that resolve. That's the difference between true commitment and just merely being interested. I often talk to clients that are being interviewed to see if they might be a fit for what we offer because we don't offer our services to everybody. We disqualify 20% of the people we talk to because they're just not the right fit. And I often say, we don't work with the interested. The interest all the interested always find an excuse. We work with the committed. They always find a way. Because we'd rather run with a few than drag the many. We would rather liberate and work with and align ourselves with and partner with those who are in the game and willing to adapt and adopt extreme ownership in taking ownership of their life and being willing to pay the price and being willing to do the work and being willing to be coachable and committed and resourceful and decisive. We'd rather work with real champions who are willing to be a champion and do what it takes to become a champion than with the people who just merely want to think about it, who just merely want to pontificate about it, who just merely want to ruminate about it, who just merely want to strategize about it, who just merely want to research about it, who just want to sit on the fence and be a spectator. Have you noticed lots of people like to be spectators? You go to a big basketball game, football game, there's lots of spectators. Who gets paid the most? Those in the stands or those in the field? That's an obvious answer, right? Those in the field. Why? Because they're all in committed. Those who are in the stands, they're just merely interested. The committed will always be paid more and have a higher status and have more freedom and more power, more possibility and more promise than those who are just merely spectators, who are merely just interested. Have you noticed that? So how about you? Are you just merely interested in success or are you all out committed to success? Because let's be real. Talk is cheap. Anyone can talk a big game and say, Dorn, I'm interested or Dorn, I'm committed. Anybody could say, hey, Dorn, I'm committed, man. And then you look at their investments in themselves. They haven't invested in any coaches, any mentors. They haven't bought a course in years. The most they've ever spent is 100 bucks a month on a CRM. And they're blaming the economy. They're blaming the rates. They're blaming this. They're blaming that. They're blaming their supervisor. They're blaming their sales manager. They're blaming their spouse. They're not taking ownership of their life. They're blaming they're excuse making. They got a nasty case of what I call excusitis. And then they wonder why they're struggling. See, everyone wants to be a champion, but not everyone's willing to do what it takes to become a champion. Why? Because it wears overalls. It looks like hard freaking work. It looks like hustle. The dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately, right? It's a grind. It's called rising and grinding. It's called going to bed later than you want, getting up earlier than you want. It's called doing it when you don't feel like it, doing it when you're not in the mood. True commitment is doing it when you said you're going to do it long after the mood you've set it in has left you. Have you noticed that? It's like all of a sudden, that's the true litmus test of whether you're really willing to pay the price to be a champion. When it's dark out and it's warm underneath your covers, and you set your alarm and it went off and all of a sudden everything in you just wants to press snooze. But the champion within you gets you out of bed because you realize if you aren't willing to do the things most people aren't willing to do, like get out of bed in the morning when you don't feel like it, you won't have the glory of the victory that most people are going to have. And so it takes a psychology where you literally have to coach yourself and say, if it is to be, it's up to me. If I want to be a champion, I can't afford to have chump level routines. If I want to be a champion, I can't afford to have a chump level daily routine. And so I'm willing to stretch myself out of my comfort zone. Screw it. Let's freaking do it. I'm a champion. I'm a warrior. I'm a dream achiever. I'm a goal crusher. I got this. If it's hard, who cares? I'll do it hard. If it's hard, perfect. That's the way it's supposed to be. If success was easy, 
ever want to be rich, fit, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why? Because it takes something to be a champion. Screw it. Let's freaking do it. If it's hard, bring it on. I'll do it hard. I'm willing to do the things most people aren't willing to do today so I can have the results most people aren't going to have tomorrow. So how do you know if you're truly committed? Well, look at the price you're paying to be successful. Are you stretching yourself out of your comfort zone? Are you getting up earlier than you want? Are you hustling harder than you want? Are you investing in yourself at a level that stretches you beyond your comfort zone in mentors and coaches and systems? in proven plans because if the answer isn't emphatically yes to that i hate to break it to you my friend but you're living in delusion saying to yourself you're committed when you're truly not committed because the truly committed prove it with their actions not just their mouth flapping they prove it with their actions with the investment of their time their treasure and their talent they prove it with an investment of sacrifice in themselves and their future and their dream Anybody and everybody can say they're willing to pay the price to be a champion. Very few people actually do. Everyone wants to be a champion. Not everyone's willing to pay the price to become a champion. So this is real talk. I get it. Maybe this is an uncomfortable conversation right now for you because you realize that you've been telling yourself the delusional, erroneous self-talk that you're committed when you're truly not because if you look at the investment of your time your talent and your treasure it doesn't line up to champion level investment it lines up with chump level investment and maybe this is that moment of truth where you just decide you know what the buck stops here today's the day it's got to stop now if i want to be a champion i can't afford to roll like a chump invest like a chump hustle like a chump and have chump level routines enough is enough no more i've had it i'm done with that I'm divorcing the chump level routine so I can marry the champion level dream and the champion level experience of life. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're going for, right? We're going for an experience of life that's full of joy and peace and power and possibility and potential and growth and fulfillment. Isn't that really the juice of life? It's finding that sweet spot, that pocket where we show up and we feel good about ourselves feel good about the momentum we're making. We feel good about the progress we're making. We respect ourselves, we honor ourselves, we respect others, we honor others. We feel like we're living the dream now, not someday because we're moving forward as opposed to stagnation or regression because if we're not growing, we're what? We're dying. So are you willing to pay the price for success? Are you willing to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone? You see, because the interested are just merely committed to their comfort zone. Let me say that again. The interested are committed to their comfort zone. The committed are always leaning towards conquering, which means they're always leaning out of their comfort zone. In other words, they're more committed to conquering than they are their comfort zone. The interested are more committed to their comfort zone than conquering. Notice the difference. Notice the difference in priorities. Notice the difference in their gravitational pull. Notice the difference in their willingness to sacrifice. Notice the difference in their willingness to stretch out of their comfort zone. If you think about your life, your life is like a, a circle. Imagine a circle and all your results are inside of that circle. Your income is inside that circle. Your amount of financial freedom is in that circle. Your amount of vacation time is inside of that circle. Your status, your house, your car, the amount you give, all that is inside your circle. Your amount of growth, it's all inside of that circle. That circle is your comfort zone. And if you want to conquer, if you want to take your life to the next level, if you want to take create a quantum leap breakthrough, it's going to require you and it's inextricably linked with you pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Wouldn't you agree you will never create breakthrough results inside your comfort zone? Well, the interested are always going to default to the comfort zone because they're not willing to pay the price. They're not willing to stretch. They're not willing to do whatever it takes. They're merely interested. That's why they always find an excuse. The committed lock their mind and their heart on the vision of what's possible. They imagine themselves already victorious. 
They imagined what it would feel like, the glory of victory to achieve their dream. They imagine the glory of the emotions of what it would feel like as if it's already real. And they get so pumped and so amped and they get so viscerally connected and associated with that dream, it becomes real for them. And therefore, they're willing to do whatever it takes and they're willing to press themselves out of their comfort zone. They're willing to make the sacrifice. They're willing to make the stretch out of their comfort zone to make that dream real because the glory of their dream is more powerful than the risk of failure for them. The glory of the dream is more powerful than their commitment to their comfort zone. You guys see the difference? Do you feel the difference? So how about you? Where are you at with that? Are you willing to pay the price to be successful? Are you willing to invest in yourself? Which by the way, is the most important, most significant, most rewarding investment you can ever make is in yourself. Now, at the risk of sounding self-serving, I can tell you from experience that the single most powerful, most profitable, highest yielding investment I've ever made in my life is in myself. When I stop trying to do it all myself, figure it out on myself, reinvent the wheel by myself, and I invested in mentors. When I stretch myself out of my comfort zone, I say, screw it, let's freaking do it. I'm committed to winning. Yes, it's a stretch. Yes, it's a lot of money. Yes, it's the unknown, but I'm not willing to stay where I'm at. I'm committed to winning. I'd rather risk the opportunity for failure in making this move and at least push myself out of my comfort zone in the direction I want to go than risk regret, risk settling, risk mediocrity, risk coming to the end of my life and say, I should have stretched myself. I should have rised higher. I should have stretched myself to higher ground. I should have made that move. I should have been more bold, more strategic, more intelligent. I should have been more proactive. Screw freaking that. I'm a champion. Champions take decisive, proactive, intelligent, bold action, period. That's how champions roll. And so I made that investment myself and my mentors. I made an investment about a year and a half ago that literally set me on a whole new trajectory. I started making more money in a freaking month than I used to make in a whole year. I went from six figures to seven figures and beyond, and it happened like that. It happened like that. I've been struggling for years. I've been struggling for like a decade, spinning my wheels, just trying to eke out a meager existence. Then I invested in myself. I made a bold move. I said, screw it, let's do it. I was more committed to conquering than I was to my comfort zone, and everything changed for me. And the same has happened for our clients. The clients that work with us, the clients who step up with us, they're not just merely interested because they always find an excuse. They're truly committed. They always find a way. And so the clients we work with, you see people going from literally struggle and strife and stress and worrying where the next deal is going to come from, making you know three, four, five Gs a month to doubling, tripling, quadrupling their income like that. How does it happen so quickly? They lock in on a proven plan. They have the right structure, the right support, the right mentorship, the right system. They stop reinventing the wheel. They start leveling up their daily routine. They divorce their chump level routine and they marry a champion level routine. And that gets them those champion level results. It's as simple as that. See, because we, it's hard to see the label from inside the bottle, right? Those blind spots, we can't see them until we get a new perspective. That's the power of mentorship. That's the power of coaching. Every top level uh, elite athlete has usually, usually multiple coaches with multiple specializations. If you're a professional golfer, you've got a putting coach, you've got a driving coach, you've got a mindset coach, you've got different coaches for different specialties. You wanna be a champion level performer? That's exactly how it works. You get specialized champion level coaches for different facets of your business, and that's how you perform at a champion level. Not by spinning your wheels, trying to reinvent the wheel on your own in the dark, frustrated, stressed out, and trying to do it on your own. That's how you stay mediocre. You know, That's how you stay stuck where you're at. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always got, right? So at the end of the day, you're going to pay the price either way. You're going to either pay the price of struggle and stress and suffering in the muck and mire of mediocrity, doing it the hard way, or you're going to pay the price of stretching to higher ground. If you think investing in yourself is expensive, try ignorance doing it on your own, right? That's doing it the freaking hard way. That's a long road, friends. That's a long road.
So if you guys would like help with really unpacking what's holding you back from going from where you are to where you want to be, I want to invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call. And on this call, you can have an opportunity to get with me or one of my consultants where you can lift up the hood on your business and really look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at, where you want to be. And if we can help you create that breakthrough, by all means, we'll show you how to do that. And if not, nothing ventured, nothing gained. At least you've explored an opportunity to get more clarity, more confidence, more capability to take your business and your life to the next level. So there is no cost, no obligation whatsoever. It's simply an opportunity for you to gain clarity and to see if we can be a catalyst for your breakthrough. If we can, we will. If you're ready to step up. See, at the end of the day, it comes down to that. How committed are you? Are you just merely interested? And again, we don't work with the interested. The interested always find an excuse. Or are you truly committed to winning? When you're truly committed, you always find a way. So I invite you to explore possibilities for breakthrough with us. If you're so inclined to do so, if you're merely interested, don't bother. We can't help you. But if you're truly committed to winning, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be the catalyst for your breakthrough. We'd love to serve you. So again, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Go ahead and book a call. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. You can get with me or one of my consultants. I promise you, it'll be one of the best invested one hours of your time you've invested in in a very, very long time, perhaps in your entire career. All right, guys. So thanks for listening. This is Dorn Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com, the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Now go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action. And I promise you this, you will get massive results. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for listening. Peace.